be the kind of person in your family, whether you're a dad or an older brother or even just a younger brother. If you have a leadership role in your family, live up to that role. Because Nabal didn't, and it almost cost his entire family their lives. Now, I'm not saying that David should have done that or gone through with it. But he came very close to losing everything he had because he wasn't that leader. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for The Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today is going to be continuing our series in 1 Samuel. So I want you to remember in the last piece of, of passage that we read that David has come across Nabal, who is a man that lives up in the mountains. He's a Calebite, so he is a descendant of Caleb, who we see is a very important figure in the books of Joshua and, and parts of the Torah as well. And so he is not really a nice person. David has shown him this, this great kindness and, and helped him out. And Nabal's reaction to this is just, yeah, um, I don't know who you are, and b basically insults him and says, who are you? Who is the son of Jesse? Screw you. Get out of here. I'm not giving you anything for helping me out. And it really is unfortunate because David gets very upset about this. He is ready to go on the warpath. He is ready to take Nabal out for this slight and insult. And really, as I discussed in the last chaplain's report, neither one of these two men reacted in the right way. I love David. I think he's one of the best characters in the Bible, but this is not David's finest hour by any stretch of the imagination. He lets his anger, his wrath, and his pride get the better of him. And so now we see ourselves at this sort of fulcrum in the story. There's a lot of tension where Nabal has slighted David. David has already got his men ready. They've, they've got their swords armed and they're about to go and take Nabal and his household out. And so this is a fascinating little episode that happens in between all of that, and we'll look to 1 Samuel 25, verses 14 through 17 for this. Now one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he spoke to them in anger. Yet the men were very good to us, and were not harmed, nor did any go missing as long as we went with them while we were in the fields. That referring, of course, to their sheep, because these people are shepherds. They were all they were a wall to us both by night and by day, all the time we were with them tending the sheep. Now then, be aware and consider what you should do, because harm is plotted against our master and against all of his household. He is and he is such a worthless man that no one can speak to him. Now I want you to keep in mind, this is a young man who is a servant of Nabal. And he sees that his master has done something incredibly stupid, which is kick the hornet's nest when the hornets were actually trying to be nice. You know, you, you hear the testimony there and you notice how he describes David's treatment of them. He says, these people were actually staying up all night with us. They were a wall to us. They were making sure none of our sheep got lost. They were protecting us. They, they've been nothing but good to us. And then when David goes and requests some supplies from Nabal, Nepal's first reaction is to insult him and tell him to get out. And so you can understand, I'm not saying that this justifies David's behavior, but you can understand, especially after that testimony of this young person that was actually there and saw how David was treating these people, you kind of get why David was pretty ticked. He took his own resources and his own men and did this act of great kindness to help Nabal and his herdsmen out. And then when David just request some basic necessities to repay the favor, Nabal not only says no, but actually goes out of his way to insult him when doing so. And so you can understand why David's a little hot under the collar, not justifying his actions, but you get it. And isn't it interesting that this young man, uh, who 
is seeing this kindness out of David. And David probably extended that kindness because he is a shepherd himself, somebody that knew how to tend sheep and had done it for the majority of his life before, you know, becoming a soldier and a man of war. He was he was a sheep herder. And so that, that's probably part of the reason that David is doing this and helping them out. That this young man who sees all of that and sees the way that David and his men have been treating them and how they have, out of the goodness of their hearts and gaining nothing from it, done all of this for their benefit. Why does the service go to Abigail? Why is it that he goes there instead of to Nabal? Well, we don't have to speculate much on this because the scripture actually tells us it says he is a worthless man and at the end of that, it actually says, no one can speak to him. In other words, this is a guy that when his mind is made up, you can't talk to him. He didn't go to Nabal because he knew it wouldn't do any good. And now his life and the life of his fellows are in danger. And so he doesn't go to Nabal. He goes to Nabal's wife, to Abigail. Because evidently he thought that he would get results out of talking to her where he wouldn't get the same results talking to this guy in the ball. I think that, that speaks volumes about not only the kind of people that Nabal and Abigail are, that, that Nabal is this rich, pompous, arrogant person that doesn't return kindness, that doesn't help people out, and is known by people of his own household as somebody that is so stubborn that it doesn't do any good to talk to him or try to convince him when he's made up his mind. You see, Abigail is apparently somebody that is more open and more sensible and can be reasoned with and actually sees kindness and rewards it. See, because if she weren't that kind of person, this servant would have had no reason to go to her in the first place. The kind of person that you are is seen by others. It affects them. And it changes their behavior. The reason that this guy chose to go to Abigail and not to his master is because they had a reputation. He had been with both of these people. He had been around them. He knew how they were. You are probably missing out on quite a few opportunities you would not have otherwise. If you are a person like Naval, somebody that's stubborn, somebody that people don't think of as reliable, don't think of as worthwhile. Whereas Abigail is somebody that people come to with their problems. Because they know that she'll listen and might actually do something about it. She's somebody that's seen as more reliable. And I want you to think about this. In a marriage, who's supposed to be that person? Not saying that women can't be. Because obviously in this story, Abigail is. I'm saying that the man is supposed to be the person that is primarily responsible for that. He's supposed to be the leader, the face of the family. That's the reason that David sent somebody to Nabal instead of his wife is because that's supposed to be how this interaction is going to work. But Nabal is so ungodly and has so little concern for others that he is incapable of leading his house. He's supposed to be the leader. And yet people are sneaking around his back and going to his wife because he's not a good leader. See, the servant actually did the right thing because he anticipated correctly what was going to happen here. And he saved some lives by going to Abigail instead. And so what has happened here is that because of the kind of person Nabal is, he has abdicated his role as the leader of his house. And we could sit here and think about, well, maybe the servant should have shown him more respect. Oh, well, it doesn't seem as though that's merited, based on what we know. So what I'm trying to say to you is don't be in a ball. Be the kind of person in your family, whether you're a dad or an older brother or even just a younger brother. If you have a leadership role in your family, live up to that role. Because Nabal did it, and it almost cost his entire family their lives. Now, I'm not saying that David should have done that or gone through with it. But he came very close to losing everything he had because he wasn't that leader. And it is only because there was someone who was a better leader than him in his household that they are able to avert disaster, and we'll get into that in our next lesson. But the point is, men, if you want respect, 
if you want people to come to you with their problems and you to be thought of as a problem solver, somebody that can fix things, which guys love and should, because that's the way that God designed us, you have to be the kind of person that is willing to listen to them, to hear their problems and to hear their suggested solutions. See, Nabal has not listened to anybody. He hasn't listened to Abigail. He hasn't listened to David or the representative that David sent. And he apparently doesn't listen to anybody else because that's the way that he's characterized here. If you want to have that level of respect, you have to command it. You have to be the kind of person that people know that not only can they go to you with their problems, but that you'll listen and pay attention and try to help them. You'll try to fix it. You don't become so self-involved and arrogant that you either write them off and don't listen, or you listen, but it doesn't change your mind because you already know everything anyway, right? That's the problem Nabal ran into. And if we need to be the kind of godly men that God designed us to be, the leaders of our households, then we can't do that. That's a losing strategy. And what's going to happen there is there's going to be a breakdown in the chain of command. Because people will know that they can't trust you. They're going to start going to places that really that's not their job. Really, Abigail should have never had to deal with this because Nabal should have taken care of it in the first place. And that's the problem that we've run into. And on a less important but still significant note, I think it's also important to note that hospitality is a quality that men are supposed to embody in their own way as well. We typically think of women as being the ones that are in charge of hospitality, and, you know, it makes sense. They, they tend to be better at that than us. But there's also a sense in which men are supposed to be hospitable and open as well. We think about Abraham and the way that he welcomed the angels, the messengers of God into his household. And um, Sarah even helped with that, but he was the one that made sure their needs were taken care of. Lot did the same thing when angels visited him right before the fall of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I could name, you know, several other examples here. David actually would be an example of hospitality later in his life when he had a, an abundance and things that he could share. And let's also look at Jesus. I mean, that's the most hospitable man that's ever lived. He even lowered himself to wash the dirty, disgusting feet of the apostles, a task that not even slaves were supposed to do if they were Israelites. And that's the kind of person that Jesus was. It's interesting that the way that you gain respect and, uh, and assert that leadership role that God made men to fulfill is by doing something that a lot of people would perceive as unmanly, which is to be humble and hospitable. To not let your arrogance to get the better of you. To listen to other people and take their concerns into consideration before you make decisions. See, if you want to be a man of God, that's a pretty important first step. You want to be somebody that people respect, take care of other people. That's the example that Jesus put out there, and it's the example that we should all be following. Whatever you do, don't be in the ball. Stay the course, friends. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.